To understand energy, we need to understand the relationship between inertia, force, and energy. An understanding of this relationship was provided by Newton, who took Galileo's concept of inertia and formalized it into the three laws of motion. The first law states that every object persists in a state of rest or in a state of uniform motion unless acted on by an external force. This is really just a formal expression of the concept of inertia as developed by Galileo. In this definition is the term force, and a force is a push or a pull on an object due to an interaction with another object. A more formal description of the role of force is captured in the second law, which describes force as something that changes the momentum of something. So mathematically, a force is something that changes the speed, in other words, acceleration of a mass. The formula for force is mass times acceleration. It has the units of mass in kilograms times acceleration, which is meters per second squared. This has also been given its own derived unit, the Newton. The third law describes the consequences of the fact that a force requires an interaction between two objects, specifically that when two objects interact, both experience a force and that this pair of forces are equal but in opposite directions. When a ball hits a wall, the ball applies a force on the wall and the wall applies a force on the ball. These forces are equal and pointing away from each other. Getting back to the simple English definition of a force as being a push or a pull on an object due to an interaction between an object and another object allows us to consider the different types of forces that exist. There are two broad categories of forces. The first group is or contact forces. These are forces that result from direct interactions between objects. The first of these is applied forces. These are pushes or pulls due to direct contact between two objects. A second type of contact force is friction. Frictional forces are generated when one object is pushed or pulled along a surface. As a force is applied to an object or an object's existing inertia moves it across a surface, the third law of motion requires that the surface push back on the object. This is friction. Friction results from molecular interactions between the two objects as they slide past each other. In the case of a block sliding on a surface, friction works opposite to the direction of motion and will cause the block to slow and eventually stop. It is also why a real ball in a real bowl doesn't continue to roll forever like the one in Galileo's thought experiment. Next is air resistance. This is very similar to friction, except that rather than moving along a surface, this is a force that resists the motion of an object as it moves through air. Picture a ball moving through the air. As it moves, it pushes the air in front of it out of the way. Consistent with the third law of motion, the air pushes back, resisting the movement of the ball. As with friction, this motion will cause the ball to slow and eventually stop. Next is normal force. As with friction and air resistance, it is an expression of the third law's requirement that there be equal and opposite reactions, but in this case, no motion is required. Consider a block sitting on a table. The block is being held in place on top of the table by the force of the gravity, which is pulling it down onto the table. In other words, the block is exerting a force, in this case, a push on the table. Again, according to third law of motion, there needs to be an equal and opposite force from the table pushing up on the block. This is the normal force. Next is tension force. For this, consider a block hanging from a rope. As gravity pulls down on the block, the force of that pull is transmitted through the rope to the hook it is hung from. This force transmitted through the rope is tension force. The final contact force is spring force. It is similar to tension force, but rather than transmitting the force through the material, spring force compresses or stretches the material that, it's that is transmitting the force. The second large group of forces are action at a distance forces. There are less of these, but they, are, they all play a major roles in our lives. The first one has already been mentioned, gravity. Gravity is the attraction between all matter. This force acts to pull objects together. On Earth, it is experienced as the force that pulls objects towards the ground. The next action at a distance force is electrical force. This force comes from interactions between charged particles. Opposite charges attract each other like charges, repel. There is also magnetic force. This is a force that is generated by the movement of electrical fields. The final action at a distance force is electromagnetic force. Electromagnetic force is one of the fundamental forces in nature. It arises from interactions between charged particles and magnetic fields. It has infinite range and is how large amounts of energy move through the universe. 
energy from the electromagnetic force also plays a central role in allowing our planet to support life.